So good morning YouTube viewers. Today we have a 2010 Ford F-150 XLT and it's here because the ABS and brake warning lights are on. And if we look at data sitting still, we can see we have a left front speed sensor signal by itself. That's pretty impressive. So we're going to have a look at the wheel bearing. It's probably a failed speed sensor, but it could be a wiring issue. But uh, what we're going to do is, is remove the left front wheel and plug in a new wheel bearing assembly before we install it. So it had actually said a B1596, a C1296, and a C1963. I think the C1296 is the one we're shooting after here. Uh, I've plugged in a new wheel bearing because that's faster than trying to uh, qualify the sensor and that'll qualify the wiring from the sensor so I'm going to set up so we can record the uh, wheel speed signal now so now I'm going to turn the uh, wheel bearing with the sensor plugged in and the key on I turned it back and forth a few quarter or 90 degrees left and right so you can see it's producing a signal so we're going to go ahead and install it that's probably the fastest way to qualify that it's not a wiring problem to the ABS unit these are digital speed sensors so they're they're a little tricky to uh, test if you unplug the sensor while its key is on it'll uh, stop sending a voltage to the sensor so that the sensor will work you have to cycle the key on and off Let's try clearing the codes with the sensor plugged in because the light is on. See if that'll clear the codes. And see if they come back. Now sometimes you have to go through a self-test in order for the codes to come back. So let's see what this B1596 service continuous codes Let's see what that code, B1596, code tips, B1, 5, that's typical, not here. Well, I'll look and see what that code generated, or 1596 code re represents. So there's no clear direction as to what that 1596 code represents. If you uh, look it up in the service literature here, it just basically tells you to cycle the key and, and clear the codes and see if it comes back. It might have something to do with the fact that it hasn't run a self-test and most of these systems will only run a self-test once it reaches a certain vehicle speed. So I know it needs a wheel bearing. We're going to go ahead and change that and then we're going to do a, a, a code clear and a self-test and see if that 1596 comes back before we spend too much time here. So before changing one of these wheel bearings I'd highly recommend to make sure the vacuum hub lock system works properly. Is there a hole in that CV boot? No, that's just grease from the upper ball joint. So there's a vacuum nipple here. We'll pull the vacuum hose off. And on, on the half-ton trucks, the axle is locked without vacuum and unlocked with vacuum. So right now, you can see when I turn the wheel bearing, the axle shaft rotates. And when I pump up the vacuum supply on this hub, for one, it should hold vacuum. My vacuum pump leaks down slightly. So it is holding vacuum and it should release. And it should lock again when you bleed the vacuum off. So this hub lock is working. Well, at, at this point it is anyways. It's wise to check this before going in to do the wheel bearing because basically you have to you know, to change this hub lock, you have to take the uh, upper ball joint and the axle shaft out, and that's part of the job here. So, I'd recommend to check to make sure that system is functional. Uh, Dorman makes a delete kit for these problematic uh, hub locks, but this one's still functional. So, remove the electrical harness. There's a little 6 mil bolt with an 8 mil head here, a couple of clips. Uh, 
pull it off to the side, remove the brake caliper assembly. The brake pads are okay, so we're just going to take it off as a complete assembly and then support it with something. I've got a hook here. Um, this cap needs to come off. And I take that cap off with a pair of channel locks. Just grab it and pull on it gently. And then I believe that's a 14 mil nut inside there that we need to remove. And we're going to put some penetrating fluid around the bolts here. And remove the back four bolts and the front nut here. I was wrong, this is a 13 mil nut. And that axle should just push in slightly. Yeah, it does. Put that off to the side. Now we'll get these these bolts here look to be about 15 mil, but we'll see. No, the bolts on the back that hold the wheel bearing in are 18 mil, so I'm going to use an impact gun and a flex to remove them. coming out one you lose a lot of torque through the universal no that's not coming out we use a ratchet on it so remove the little three little six mil bolts I removed a whole the backing plate in place and put that off and then basically the axle shaft should just pull out of here these ones don't usually rust in too bad because they actually have a o-ring seal on them this one's been changed before I can tell because it's got never sees on it um, you can see the teeth that the vacuum hub lock mechanism attaches to so try not to get dirt inside here because this is uh, lubricated and we're going to set that off to the side we're going to clean this housing up carefully, remove any uh, rust from the surface here, and install the new wheel bearing. So there's the housing cleaned up. I like to use uh, a little bit of Never Seize with gear oil mixed in it to thin it out a little bit. And you want to make sure that that O-ring seal is on there. It should come on the wheel bearing because that keeps the, well that seals the hub so water doesn't get in there. And also you want to move this this plug from this bearing here. That little needle bearing is pre-greased. So we're ready to reinstall this. And uh, I gotta look up the bolt torques. So these large bolts here are 129 foot pounds. And the axle nut at the end is 20 foot pounds. But double check your specs in case it's different. Uh, these are like 100 inch pounds or something like that. I didn't even torque them, just go by hand. And we're ready to install the brake rotor. Make sure the inside of the brake rotor uh, flange is not rusty because it will maybe cock the rotor and cause a pulsation. And if you're, you're there, you might as well give the backing plate a little coat of paint to try to slow down Mother Nature here. Let's continue. So there's the wheel back on. We're going to clear the codes from the ABS and go for a road test and see if that other code goes away but just looking around underneath the vehicle here and I see this the hanger bearing on this drive shaft is the mount is failing unfortunately that mount and hanger bearing I believe are serviced by replacing the entire drive shaft thanks Ford mind you they do have them in stock for a mere thousand dollars or something like that I can't remember how much it costs maybe it's not that much but that's gonna need to be addressed soon well the interesting thing is now I cycled the key on and I say the ABS light is off let's see if this will clear now clear codes yes exit let's do a key on engine off self test 
Sometimes you need to cycle the key in between clearing codes. Well, isn't that special? Well, let's look at data and confirm that we got a speed signal from that left front. Might as well check all four. Yeah, right front, left front, right rear, left rear. So the two left sides are on top. Left front, I'm going to turn left front wheel. Then I'm going to turn the left rear wheel, which will probably turn the other side because of the differential. Oh, wait, yeah. it's in park. It's in park, so I can't turn the wheel. But I'll check the other front wheel. Yeah, that one turns. So, I'm sure this one's going to be fine. We'll call this one fixed. Thanks for watching.